So people are very excited about Jupiter right now because it is going to be the brightest in the sky that it's been for a while. And this is due to two things. So one is that it is in opposition. And what this means is that we are directly between the sun and Jupiter, right in the middle. And when this happens, all the sun's light is able to focus very nicely on Jupiter and it appears very bright to us because we're right in that sweet spot. The second part is called perigee. So this refers to when Jupiter in its orbit gets closest to Earth in its orbit. And this happens, you know, once every 12 months, but that distance between the two planets will change because the orbits are elliptical. So we're just at that sweet, sweet spot where the orbits are the closest together that they've been. And it's special because these two events, opposition and perigee, and a very close perigee are happening at the same time. So opposition will occur, the timing is a bit odd, but opposition occurs about every 13 months. Uh, opposition will occur when we're right in between Jupiter and the Sun, whereas perigee will occur once every 12 months. But they fall out of sync pretty easily. And of course, perigee, that distance changes, and it may not always line up with opposition, and they, the perigee distance can change like hundreds of millions of kilometers, which doesn't mean a lot, but means a lot when it's very, very close. I think the closest it is today is in like the 300s of kilometers, millions of kilometers, whereas at its farthest, Jupiter is like 600 million kilometers away from Earth. So that distance is what's the important part in this type of thing. This type of event with a perigee and opposition and a close perigee happening at the same time, I think this year is like once every, you know, this won't happen again for another almost, I think, 100 or so, just under 100 years. So it is very, you know, tense, you well, know, exciting when it does happen, but it will not happen very often. You know? The last time you and me are going to get a chance to see it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, in our life. Won't happen again in our lifetime, anyway. The best way to see this is, you know, depends what you want to see. So if you want to see detail and maybe even the Galilean moons, you're going to have to use a telescope. So a telescope will enable you to see like cloud bands of Jupiter as well as some of the Galilean moons or very like high magnification binoculars uh, will allow you to see some detail and the sh like, you know, the markings of the Galilean moons. But without a telescope or binoculars, you're still able to see Jupiter. It appears as a very bright star in the sky. In terms of location, we're lucky because Jupiter is going to be up kind of all night. As soon as the sun sets, Jupiter will rise. And so you have viewing from about 7 p.m. all the way until 7 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, the best time to see it is going to be probably about 1 a.m. when it's highest in the sky. You'll be able to see it. And in terms of location, if you want to see it from Jupiter rise to Jupiter set, you're going to want to be able to have a high enough location to see the horizon to be able to see that uh, rising and setting action. Well, I think what's interesting is if you were to watch it for long enough and you know if you have like a time lapse uh, take a time lapse of it using a telescope you will be able to see the rotation of Jupiter actually which is very very cool you can actually see it move the cloud bands move